glasses that actually block out a lot of the blue light. Your phones have a setting for evening. That evening setting, computers have it too, right? It blocks out levels of blue light, which studies show stimulate the pineal gland in your brain. When the pineal gland is stimulated, your body doesn't release melatonin, which is part of natural circadian rhythm. We're coming into summertime now where the days are lighter. We all, I do, tend to stay up later because there's more daylight. And that is because melatonin doesn't release. So even if you start to get into a natural summer cycle, right, where you're staying up a little later, but then with What's supposed to happen is the melatonin releases, and when you hit the pillow, you should be out three to five minutes. That's actually your body following the regular cycle. Disruptors, TVs, phones, computers, all that sort of stuff. So a blue blocker gives you a little bit of a step up because it lets you at least try to kind of block that out a little bit so that it's not impacting the body's ability to release melatonin. Napping works, yes, napping works really well. So depending on what's going on, you're in 26 weeks? Uh, 36. 36 weeks. So you might have a lot of sleep disruption mm -hmm. during the middle of the night as well. And if your body is saying, I just need to close my eyes, afternoon, 20, 30 minutes, close your eyes. Yeah, give it, give it, give it what it needs. Now, if you find that you're sleeping a couple hours at a time during the day, that generally means you're not sleeping enough at night. So a little 20, 30 minute nap, and you wake up kind of restored, is your body just reset. It's given a chance to shut down the parasympathetic nervous system, relax, just restore and regenerate. <coughs> Meditation is a little different, but I'll jump into that in a sec. But if it's more than a couple hours where you lay down in the afternoon and you're like, whoa, I slept for three hours this afternoon, you're not getting enough sleep. Meditation is a whole different um, area of impacting the sympathetic and parasympathetic. For me, because it's the time of the day that I find, I tend to be, I'm a lark, I get up very early. I like that 5.15, 5.30 time frame in the morning where not much is moving. Literally get out of bed, sit in my meditation spot and meditate for 20 minutes without looking at any electronics other than to set my meditation mode going. Because as soon as you start to look at the electronics, got an email, got a this, got a that. You take yourself out because you're already coming out of like hopefully sleep states so that you can get into the meditative state, which also helps the body mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Can I get too much sleep? I've always been somebody, even since I was little, that has always needed at least 10 hours, at least. If you're consistently doing it, then no. Okay. That's what your body needs. I mean, it's, it's so interesting. There was a time, and I think it was, I think it was the 80s, where it started to be this cool thing to sleep like, I can get by for three or four hours a night, and I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. You know, we never chastised babies for sleeping too much. Or little kids, when we know we've got to put them down for a nap. And the thing that we grow out of that is actually, I'd say it's ridiculous, but we just don't think about it. Because we think we just grow out of it and somehow we grow out of needing rest and restoration. But we don't, we do need it. So if your body needs 10 hours, I mean, one of the things I heard so much during COVID, myself included, there were nights I slept 10, 12 hours but repeatedly not realizing how when all this external noise kind of dampens down, the body just wanted to rest. And it took some time to catch up. I mean, it was a couple of weeks of just a lot of sleeping and then finally, finally feeling restored. So sleep is really, really important and it is probably one of the most significant important things you can do to improve the quality of your baseline. I mean, even think about when we get sick, what do we do most of the time? Sleep. The body's shutting down to repair. So the natural thing that you need to do every night is shut down and repair. And if you don't have
since it is so sunny here, um, we have eye masks, we travel with eye masks. I used to think that it was kind of a real, you know, princessy thing, got a little eye mask and stuff, but it makes a huge difference when you can block out external light. Our eyelids are thin for a reason, because it detects light. It's part of waking up in the morning, right? So if you can actually block the light, any sort of little electronics, it's amazing how um, even in the hotel room, the fire extinguishers, that teeny little light in the middle of the night is big when you look around and you'll find it, right? The colors on the phone, laid the washcloth on the phone because it has a red thing on it that woke me up uh, the other night. So, sleep. Any more questions on sleep? Now that we can't come back to it. Well, yes, I, I just have a little comment. I got an Apple Watch a while back mm -hmm. and I've been, it's actually been helping me get more sleep, but I did look at how much sleep I got last night. It just wasn't really enough, but it really makes a difference. So it, if, it you, if you really know how much you're sleeping. And understanding even the stages of sleep, not that you need to become an right. expert. I have, instead of a watch, I have a thing that's called an Oura, O-U-R-A ring. And it is a mini computer. And it tracks the stages of sleep. It tracks my heart rate, my resting heart rate, my heart rate variability. It can tell if um, I've eaten too close to dinner, Oh, I'm sorry if I've gone to sleep too close to dinner because your body temperature is way higher. Your body's working on digesting food instead of sleeping in repair. So all these wonderful things that happen during the repair cycle to impact our mitochondria that help us live longer, healthier lives um, are completely disrupted. So and to understand the stages of sleep, like they didn't really think that stage two was important but it turns out stage two sleep is very, very important. It's the part of the brain that dispenses with all the stuff you've done in a given day, right? So on any given day, your body's replaying stuff at nighttime in the various stages of sleep. It hangs on to the things it needs to, discards other things it doesn't. It's a big part of reorganizing cognition and recall, which is why you, again, need to sleep, so that your cognition and recall are stronger. Yes, ma'am. What about eating and how much time from time to eat dinner or eat you know, a bedtime snack or something until you go to sleep? What Ideally that? two hours. You want to have time for the food to clear your stomach and start to move through your colon so that it's not working on, it takes a lot of energy to break down food in the body. Your, your body temperature raises, so it does take a lot of energy, which takes away from the other things from repair. So ideally about two hours. Yes, ma'am. And you mentioned mitochondria a couple times. Mm -hmm. I know there are foods you can eat that are good for that if you're like mitochondria or injured, but I, I don't think COVID did give you a lot of answers to that. Are you going to address the foods you can eat to your sleep? We can, we'll, we'll talk about the nutrition. Could you repeat the question? You could yes, ask. I'm sorry. So she's, um, she was asking me about mitochondria. So mito, because I've mentioned it a couple times. So mitochondria are the fingerlings in your cells, right? And as we get older, a natural part of aging is that because our body isn't producing a lot of different chemicals, NAD, NADH, all these sorts of things that we have, part of the generation is that cells don't clear themselves as well because we don't sleep as much, we're doing a lot of things. External environmental factors have an impact on what our cells are doing. So the fingerlings themselves get smaller, don't regenerate as quickly, they also don't clear the cell which is what's uh, called zombie cells. And that also leads to degenerative diseases and other things that start to impact us in a variety of levels. I'm not aware of specific foods that affect mitochondria, but I- Supplements? Supplements, yes. Yeah, and that's a, from an optimization and wellness side, that, that might be a whole nother discussion because I'm in peptides and all these other sorts of things that are now available to the general public that weren't. But if we start to talk about the things that we can impact today, that you can make some decisions about and incorporate in your life today, right? So let's, one other thing I'll just go throw out about sleep. So let's say that on average you're sleeping and you're at a conference, you're gonna see people you haven't seen in a while, people are probably gonna be up late tonight, again up early tomorrow. So there's some other things that you're gonna do to try and mitigate that through diet and exercise to at least help you get a little bit of a leg up because you don't want to cut out social life and the other parts of our community.
that make life worth living, right? But we, we try to compensate, but then you're still probably gonna need to catch up. Like if you go to bed at 2 a.m. and you're back up at 8 a.m., you're gonna be at a deficit tomorrow, but there's some other things maybe we can do to kind of help with that, realizing you need to get back to as normal as possible as soon as possible. Unlike fat, our body does not slow speed. You can't, you can't do what you're gonna do over and over and over and think I'm gonna sleep on the weekend, it does not work that way. It doesn't work.